Hey guys, how you doing? Steve Lav here. Hey, on this video here, I want to discuss superheat and subcool. What is it? Where does it happen? Why do we need it? What exactly is superheat and what exactly is subcooling? I'm going to try to explain it, you know, in my, what, the way I see it and, um, why you need to know is because when you hook your gauges up to a system, okay, we're looking at pressures and temperatures. Now, a seasoned tech can look at those pressures and temperatures and determine on what's happening in the system just by, you know, what's going on there by looking at the different stuff. But if you don't know what, what subcooling is and what superheat is and, and how, how it all comes about, you're kind of like, all right, superheat should be there, subcooling should be that, but you don't know what's happening in the system. That's why I'm kind of trying to do this uh, this little video. It might help out, especially the new guys, it might help out. It's very important. And on this particular video, I'm discussing 22. Um, the suction line would be 70 PSI um, at, the at the compressor, uh, 51 degrees Fahrenheit. And the liquid line would be 175 PSI at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what would be, you know, the gauges would be reading. And then I, I discussed, you know, what's happening inside the condenser, what's happening inside the evaporator. And um, like I said, it's for, it's for the new guys. And I just want I've been wanting to do something on superheat and subcool. And I try to put it together and hopefully, hopefully it comes out okay. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you guys don't throw those stones at me. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. On this video, I want to discuss superheat and subcooling. Where it happens and what exactly is it. Okay, so if you look at this unit, break this thing in half. This is the outside condensing unit, which would be... Um, a compressor, a fan, and a coil. Okay? This lower part would be the inside unit, which would be an air handler or an A-coil. Basically what it is is a coil, a metering device, and a fan. This would be strictly air conditioning. A heat pump would be something a little bit different. It would have a reversing valve in it and have an accumulator and whatnot. But we're talking strictly air conditioning. Uh, basically what I'm talking about is superheat and subcool and how you determine it and where it takes place. This is what this video is about. Okay so um, on this here what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with two different measurements. We're gonna work with 70 PSI on the suction line and we're going to work with 195 PSI on the small liquid line. That would be the head pressure. Now, how I determine that is on a PT chart. Okay, I'm working with R22 on this video. R22 at 70 PSI. Okay, R22 at 70 PSI. would be 41 41 degrees saturation this is a pressure air conditioning is all pressure and temperature and the 195 okay 195 comes to 100 saturation 100 psi at 195 psi um, the temperature is going to be saturated at 100 degrees there'll be total saturation Okay, so we're coming in here on a high pressure liquid line from the condenser after it's been condensed and it's running up to the metering device. Okay, this is the inside unit. After the metering device, okay, this is where the low side starts after the metering device. Either this could be a piston or a TXV. On this particular thing, we're going to say this is a piston. Basically, it's just an orifice. Different size orifice for different size tonnages. So you got your your hot you, you know you got your uh, your liquid coming up here you, you call them a liquid coming up to the meter in the device okay it's spraying in here um, in, into uh, low low pressure 
liquid vapor droplets. Okay? And at this point right here, our suction line at 70 PSI, over here is going to be, saturation is 41 degrees. Okay, at 70 PSI. So you can see this is saturated. So at this point, at this blue line right here, we're 41. If you could put a temperature gauge on it, it'd be 41 degrees. Okay, and then what happens inside the evaporator is, the in, in, inside unit is, you've got a fan that blows across here. Okay, and you got say you got 70 degree air coming in. Okay, and you got 55 degree air going out. You got a 15 degree delta T going across that. So this 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 70 degree air that's coming in here, this refrigerant is picking up that that air and changing it. Okay, it's taking the heat out of the air. Okay, and then at that point here is where you be where superheat takes effect. You you start picking up heat from this from this air that goes across, okay? So we're measuring over at the suction line over by the compressor. Actually, you should be taking your measurement right here at the evaporator, but there's no tappings there. We have to take our measurements at the suction line of the compressor where our where our service valves are. So we're measuring 70 psi, like I said again, but our temperature on that suction line, that's why it's important. Temperature and pressure. We're reading 51 degrees Fahrenheit. On the big line okay we're reading 71 a uh, 41 here okay so if we're reading 41 where it comes in and we're reading 51 here that's 10 degrees different difference that's what they call 10 degree superheat superheated vapor now the reason why that's important is because if this had zero superheat coming back to the compressor you're going to be pumping liquid to that compressor. You're going to kill that compressor. It's not designed to pump liquid. It's designed to pump vapor, okay, or, or superheated. Superheated vapor is what it's called coming back to the compressor. Okay, as it goes through the compressor, it's coming through as a compressed gas. This is gas, vapor or gas, okay. This, this pumps out. This is where it changes from low to high at the compressor. So it goes through the compressor, it pumps it up. Now this discharge right here is high pressure gas. It comes into the condensing unit, hence the name condenser. It condenses the hot gas into a liquid. Okay, now, like we said, our liquid line pressure was 195. Okay, at 195 PSI, saturation, it will at 100 at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be saturated. Okay, so if you see this red right here, this is 100 degrees. If you could measure inside the condensing unit, it would be 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But we're measuring our liquid line where we come out of the condenser, and we're reading 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So the difference between 100 and 90 is 10 degrees. That's 10 degrees sub-cooling. Is what it's called. Basically, what's happening is the air is blowing across that, okay, and the air is coming in at say seventy. We're coming in at seventy degrees, okay, and we're going out at eighty-five. So you got a fifteen-degree differential there, which is the delta T across that condensing unit. You're you're getting rid of that heat. Basically, you're taking the heat from inside the house where you don't want it, and you're moving it to outside where it don't matter, and you're getting rid of it. Okay, so that's why it's important to have subcooling here and superheat here. Now, if you had a metering device, uh, TXV, you would have to charge the unit by subcooling only because the metering device would maintain that 10 degree superheat no matter what. It would maintain that. So that's why we always charge through subcooling um, if you had uh, TXV. Which all the, a lot of the new stuff's coming out with TXV now. So hopefully this helps somebody. And like I, like I said, you know, the pressure temperature chart. Saturation of 22 at 70 PSI is 41. And saturation of 22 at 195 PSI is 100 degrees. So we're measuring 90 instead of 100. So that's 10 degrees subcooling. Now usually if you got a high subcooling you got a high charge, overcharged. 
Um, you know, and on superheat, I'm going to do another video on superheat and how to determine that. And, and you know, on a cold day, you're going to have low superheat. On a hot day where you got a big load, you're going to have more superheat. Because you got more, you got hotter air blowing across and you got more boiling effect taking, a, taking effect here. You're boiling off the refrigerant. So hopefully this helps somebody. Yeah, so hopefully this helped a couple of guys. And remember, remember the PT chart, pressure and temperature. You know, we're looking at the differential between, you know, the saturation temperature and the actual temperature coming back. The saturation temperature of the pressure, what it is, and saturation, and what our actual temperature is. And that will give us our superheat or our subcool. Um, you know, on subcool, it's less. On superheat, it's more, temperature-wise. And we have to have superheat. If we don't have any superheat, we're flooding the compressor back, and you're going to kill the compressor. It's very important. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that come into effect, too. If you got zero superheat, you might have a fan that's not working. You might have a dirty, um, you know, a dirty uh, evaporator coil. You might have, um, you know, a dirty filter. You might have undersized returns. That's all the stuff that you have to... You, as a, as a mechanic, when you start really working with all this stuff, then you could determine, you know, what it could be. And, you, you know, you go around and you see if this is the problem or not. That's why you have to know what's going on in the system, what should be going on in the system to determine what the problem is. It's very important. Hopefully, I helped out a couple of guys, uh, especially the new guys. Hopefully, this helps you out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.